got a wild one and it's touching. Yeah, there's a lot of great conversation this on today's episode. This is a great episode. episode. So get ready. We're back into it. We have very special guests from season 14 of Drag Race, the icon, the legend, Carrie Colby. Bow, 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 bow. We talk about everything. We talk about drag. We talk about childhood. We talk about identity. And I'm back to thinking I want a BBL. Ooh. Ooh. Goodbye. Goodbye. M. Oh. M. Mom! When first choice is a big old bus, you turn around and boom, you end up with us. Sloppy seconds. Oh, Diva. Our number is 213 hey. 536 yeah. 9180. Our email is sloppy seconds at gmail.com. Now on with the show. You love you, stupid little fuck you, not so fuck you, dirty fuck you, stupid little fuck you, stop me taking with Big Dipper. If you find me, find that Big Dipper. That's pretty good for a bitch who just had COVID. That is good. <laughs> She's testing negative. She's back in the scene. I am. I'm ready to live. I had it. I was down bad. It was actually days. amazing when I spoke to you on the phone a few days ago. You were like, the wild thing about me right now is that I have not had drugs or alcohol in like three days, which is a unique, unique, unique. Thank you. Experience for one Miss B. Did any weed come out? Well, I'll wait. I'll wait. All I'll right. Wait. To quote our guest, when you talk, ooh, ooh. <laughs> from season ooh, fourteen wait. of Drag Race, the body, the beauty, the doll, Tranos herself. It's Carrie Colby. Hi. Oh my god. How Hello. are we feeling? Great. Good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling energized. Yeah. Yes. Hello. You came in like a light. I came in falling. Well, <laughs> there was we a I tumbled in literally. She came to sit in the seat, and it took her. It went straight behind you. But I loved the way that you walked into this building because you just said <laughs> hello. hello, hello, and you just like joyfully walked in. You introduced yourself to everyone. Like when I show up places, I'm always like mean mugging and sort of quiet really? and just sort of like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh you gosh. just walked in. Hello. I feel like. I have like really people don't know this, but I have like severely bad social anxiety. Like it's it's funny. Like I make fun of myself for how bad it is. So I feel like I always do quirky things that are like really nice. And people are like, why are you being so nice? I'm like, because I don't want to like shake and have a panic attack. Oh, <laughs> smart. It's like a exposure therapy. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it <laughs> makes me feel more comfortable to like immerse and be like, okay, hello, how's everyone doing? And yeah. like, because I used to try to do the whole like. <clears throat> I don't need an introduction. Right. And then I would literally like go to the bathroom and I'd be like shaking because I don't know, I can't handle adrenaline. I think oh <laughs> it's 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 like I really want to adopt this idea because we were just talking about I was just in Florida, you were just in Florida two weeks ago for gigs or whatever. Yeah. But like I even when my name is on the poster, like if I'm performing or something, I was at this huge bear event and I walked around and I could like tell people had recognized me from like the program list of like, oh, he's doing a show that I right. I was so Or they were like, Is that the guy from The Hobbit? Right, exactly. That's what <laughs> no. they thought. Back you see that little his little furry feet. <laughs> back, honey. But, <laughs> back. <laughs> but I felt that anxiety. Like I yes. felt that anxiety of like walking around and I'm like do I say hi first? Do, so there were multiple <laughs> times when I locked eyes with someone and they like nodded with recognition and I nodded back, recognizing their recognition and then nothing happened and I walked away and I was like, that was so awkward. And you, yes. you would just walk up and say, hello. I would hopefully, hopefully. I either say hello or I say something so inaudible and people are like, yeah, <laughs> Like no, literally. Like now that's Hobbit language. Right <laughs> Speaking of Hobbit, yes. <laughs> no, it's it's admirable, and I want oh, to you. adopt that. I I like that as a life Great. philosophy. When just, you walk in, just say hello. Just say hello. <laughs> Be a light. So, do you think that that's one of the big changes in your life from being on Drag Race? Now that you have to meet so many more people. Oh, everybody knows. Like you. the anxiety is a little lower. What do you think know. it's made I it feel worse? Like my, I feel like my anxiety. It's so interesting because I never remember in the past having like loads of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the more that I've gotten into like the performing arts world or like trying to do like uh, appearances or all this stuff, all the things that I really want to do and love, the more I've noticed like I'm terrified of being like stared at. 
it's wow. it's like so embarrassing. Do you do you think it's because like when you're on stage, you're in control of what people are looking at. You're like, this is the look. This these are the moves. Well, that's the theory. I think that's the goal. <laughs> The go- that see this is we're getting to it. I okay, think okay, I think we just somewhere. discovered what the anxiety is. The goal is that I'm in control, right. and I think I feel the least in control because I, it's like I can do a lot at home. There's like no yeah. one there. I'll be spinning, doing everything. Right. You would swear that I'm like Miss Miss uh, Universe Dancer nine hundred two one zero something uh-huh. ridiculous. <laughs> yes, and I'm familiar with that title. <laughs> On to that path. Uh, you you uh, you have what? You are you are an alumni, <laughs> aren't you, my dear? <laughs> um, but you know, like I feel like I can do that at home. But then the minute I'm in front of people, and then there's like the 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 quickening of just focus. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, it breaks mine really bad, and I don't know. I feel like I try to get over it, but it's like a past thing of like I think I used to get stared at and made fun of. Right. So now I'm like, oh my god, they're staring at me and they're gonna make fun of me. Oh, but like, they're staring I make at you fun in a different me. way. Now. Yeah, I think so. It's like admiration. Yeah, they yeah. love you. They I, stare at her to make I fun of her. So. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the clown mama. That's what it is. I think I want to be more of a clown. I want people to like laugh, and they're always just like, that is well, a tricky it, thing though, because you're like, oh, no. like you're so stunning <laughs> yeah. that people like have a hard, hard time being like, oh, it. she's gonna be funny too. Fuck her. No. <laughs> she can't be both. Yeah, they'd be jealous. Yeah, oh. of your boogie. I think that might be what happens sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. We I don't talk know. about it all the time. People get jealous of pretty drag queens. There That's is, why there the, is a vibe there. the trope of the old Jackie Beat drag queen. She always hates the young girls because they're yeah. pretty. She hates not them Jackie Beat, but just like. <laughs> She's, you know, the Say it to the, the camera, that, tell the her Jackie, Jackie, Jackie how you feel. Jacqueline, I know that you're a friendly lady and you've always been so nice to me. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, so um, everyone knows you from Drag Race. Yes. And being on Drag Race in this day and age is a really interesting experience. I spent yeah. a lot of time working with, you know, queens who did earlier seasons. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, obviously, like, season 14 had the biggest premiere. Yeah. You're going to these red carpet events, the MTV awards, the Emmys, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, there are also like 11 other drag race franchises where in the past, the U S franchise was the only one. (sighs) How do you feel about the attention you're getting? Do you feel like you have to like identify which franchise you were on or sort of remind people? No, season 14 is the current season, even though, you know, Iceland and Portugal and whatever. Are and, out. and Antarctica next. Uh-huh. You know? uh-huh. um, Those damn penguins. <laughs> right? They got penguins and aliens competing, honey. Um, I feel like. Do you believe in aliens? Oh my God. Have you not seen me? I am definitely you are extraterrestrial. the alien superstar. She is oh, the I, one. I feel like I communicate with them like unconsciously all the time. Oh my God. Like I don't think I'm human. I don't believe in humans, actually. Stunning. Yeah, I'm like Exclusive. I'm like I'm aliens like the and hobbits, aliens and penguins. <laughs> okay. And a mixture of all of the above. <laughs> a little splice, if you will. Um, I think to go back to the the drag race thing, it, it it's very hard to keep up with. I barely keep up with it myself. And right. I think the funny joke I run into people is like, oh, like you're from the show. Like, I don't know, I don't watch anymore. And I'll be like, I don't either. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's a lot. It's, it's too much. so much to keep up with, but I think the easy way to get through it is you basically just be like, "Oh, I'm on current season," or you identify when it's not current anymore. But I don't know. I just I say I'm on the Trantastic season. You want to know where all the trans yeah, you, girls were? That's the season I was on. That's the one. And what? All the dolls. Go ahead. Well, I just think it's so interesting because you were the season that once it aired, COVID was finally coming to kind of an end. Yeah. So you were the first season out of COVID to actually be able to tour. Yes, we actually kind of got. Well, it was weird because in the very beginning of our thing, um, we didn't have a premiere because there was a resurgence of COVID yes. oh, right. and they like shut that down. And then we didn't even start doing anything until like February, March. So it was interesting. But cause... luckily at that time, no one had yet gone home from the season. No. Oh, right. Cause that was the world's longest drag race season. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was a long, they get longer every year. They get that Emmy every time too. <laughs> they do. Well, we didn't get 
one. Yeah, well, Rue got hurt. Well, Rue got hurt. Rue got hurt. So and that's then all that's that matters. That's part of the show. And that's this part of the show. Am I too loud? Every time I talk, you do this. No, she's no, just I think beautiful. The, uh, Listen. The, <laughs> it's she's the, just it's the shape in my ear. It, like, I think my ear hole's a little tight. Those alien oh. ears. <laughs> oh, oh, she's my so ears. tight. Oh, she's so tight. I just had them done. <laughs> so what has your, you've done a lot of red carpet. So um, many. I guess so, yeah. I guess so. I, I mean, you're so. walking solo <laughs> you at at, on MTV uh, red movie, carpets. MTV I did. I, they do crazy. so many. Which was it? Was it video music or I movie did, TV? I did both. Oop. I did both. And they were both so fun. I But that was my thing. Like, I wanted to be, I was like, if there's something, if there's Getty Images, if there's press, <laughs> if there's... Well, you are a Getty girl. I, I well, you were wearing a Getty. I was going to say, I've been a Getty girl for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> we go way back, but that's... that's, that's so maybe they're the house. Right. What is it like preparing for something like the Emmys versus something like Drag Race? I know that it's like, you have a theme and whatever's going on, but like for the Emmys, did you go into it being like, oh, I want the cuntiest outfit. I'm going to have it made. I thought I wanted something very oblong and vegetable and vegetarian. So I, Are you bringing up the onion dress? The onion no one was dress. Gonna talk, I was going to ignore that happening. It, I'm totally fine with it happening. Everyone's like, what the fuck was she wearing? I was like, something different. I deliberately wanted to kind of be like, you expect me to be in cutout, see-through, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, I wanted something that was so different from that, but like all intricate detail. And it was a very um, emotional collection from August. It was yeah. his final collection. So I wanted to really give light to that. I think that for the Emmys, getting ready for that, in my opinion, a lot easier than getting ready for Drag Race. Cause yeah, you're given... that's a weird question. No, I just meant like, sorry. <laughs> getting ready for a months long competition No, 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 I guess I just meant like look wise. <laughs> Did you put the same effort into being like, oh, I want to turn like a crazy look Tea. on this red carpet. Yeah. Or do I just want to go and be simple and, well not simple, but like just, elegant and glamorous like did you think about it in those two ways i think my head first went to emmy's glamour we want to give old hollywood yeah. right and then I, I immediately was like i also am in this aura i think post drag race i've really been pushing myself to my ear hole sorry um <laughs> oh, i'm gonna have to keep adjusting because it just so keeps like small. sliding out and i feel it and i'm like oops <laughs> um <laughs> But I I'll think, take that audio and put it over something nice. Right. Yes. It just keeps, keeps sliding, sliding out. out. <laughs> like, oops. It just slides up so, so, so gorgeously. Um, <laughs> but I think for the Emmys and just things in general, I've really been wanting to push myself to be uncomfortable. I don't like being comfortable. I think I've really learned that. And I like trying to do things that are like, I like kind of studying what I already do right. and be like, okay, well, this is predictable for me. This is, people assume I'm always blonde. People assume whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, what can I do with that? And like put it on its head and flip it or yeah. make it something crazy and then, or make it vegetables. Yeah. Just turnips. Stunning. <laughs> Slowly over time, you're just different ingredients in a soup. Yes. I want to be a full it. just jambalaya at this point. <laughs> oh, I want to oh, be a jambalaya. Oh, oh. <laughs> Miss Jew. Yes. So um, let's take a little break. Okay. And then we're going to get into some background, some Ooh. backstory. Ooh, yeah. and me grill me, honey, like a swordfish. Nice. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> and we're back. So, Carrie. Yes. You were originally from Texas. Um, yeah. Okay. Me Texas well, girl. Texas from Houston. Again. Dallas, born and raised. I'm a North Texas diva. Okay. I'm a Houston yeah. girl, so we're close oh, to the Gulf. Oh, I enjoy we Houston. We have the dirty water down there. <laughs> and the humidity. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's a swamp. It's gross. I mean, it's sweaty and kind of like, you know. Listening. No, it's there's, not attractive in any way. There's flavor. <laughs> There's a, a lot, lot of flavor, flavor in Houston. It's oil, honey. A little Ooh. bit of flavor. So, okay, so you talked about this a bit on Drag Race, but you were raised in like a very religious Ooh. household. That She's was, busy. That, That's that, Jesus. It's that Jesus was a, That calling. was Jesus trying to enter. Let me just, let me just tell Jesus to go sit down. Okay, see, my phone didn't fall, but I did. Why? Well, um, I was raised extremely evangelical. It's funny because like, 
the name Carrie, people used to make fun of me and be like, oh, like Carrie, the movie Carrie, you're, you're in blood, you're dripping. Right. And I at first didn't get it because I wasn't allowed to watch movies. And then when mm. I watched it, I was like, kind of like uncomfortably seen. <laughs> I don't like being seen in things because like when I feel seen, it means that it's so like weird and, and uncomfortable that I feel related to that. And I was like, oh my God, my mother fully, 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 very, she's like a mixture of the of the two uh, Carrie's moms, but she like the Julianne Moore specifically. I was like, I feel like I'm looking at like a recording oh of like God. my mom, and, like our our dynamic. I didn't realize it was that religious. My, it was because I think similar to the movie Carrie, my mother specifically, she was like the antagonist of the faith in our house. Like my dad was very religious too, and it was like in a lot of clergy stuff, but he was kind of like. We do it. We praise Jesus. We do our thing. We go home. And my mom, I think her way of like coping with a lot of dark things in her story, mm. she didn't have much structure. So she was like, I'm giving all the structure. We're giving a oh. corset in terms of energy. And it was just, Whoa. it was a lot. It was a lot. Because <laughs> you even said on the show, like you didn't grow up with secular music. Like no. you only listened to, yeah. what would that be? Black Hymns? gospel. Hymns? Hymns, but my, my my mom is, she's such a character. I think she is the alien, honestly. <laughs> she is a four foot 11 little oh my white troll doll. Um, and she really, I mean, clearly I, I'm mixed, so she loves her chocolate. And that woman swears to God, I think that she is a woman of color at this point. So like she only listened to like black gospel. Got like okay. I could name probably so much about black gospel because that's like all we ever heard and imagine in learning that there's like this little tiny hobbit of a woman that's just doing this and clapping and she's like ah, yes, Jesus, yes and it's like huh <laughs> like, <laughs> why my whole life was a big question mark still is but like definitely then <laughs> do you because you also talked about again on on the show when you shared about your family like yeah. you talked about the lack of acceptance. Oh, yeah. And then you left home. Yep. At 15? 15. And it was something that, like, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, oh, like, I'm thankful. Like, right. I was yeah. like, thank. It's terrible to say, but like, this is just the reality of my situation. I was like, thank God I'm getting kicked out because I would. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would have made it past 15 if I didn't get kicked out at 15. It was, right. it was very that. Did oh, you wow. ever think of leaving yourself? Yes. I wanted to run away all the time. And it's funny. I've never really been asked this. But um, the summer before I got kicked out, it was it, we had just been very rocky because um, there was a situation that kind of like made people realize that I was a little queer. Uh -huh. But it was, um, I don't know how we are with censorship, but it was... Um, S A. It was it was a oh, it was no. an assaulty type thing. Yeah. yeah, it was not a good vibe. And I literally told them like, "Oh, something bad happened to me." Like I'm letting y'all know, and um, they literally like flipped their shit on me, and they're like, "It was your fault. Like you oh, caused this because no. you have that gay demon in you vibes." And oh. so. From that point, I think I was like 12, 13. And when I told them that and everything just went so downhill from there. So by the time that I was like actually starting to like, okay, now I know the life I want to live. I, uh -huh. I, I know that I want to be something very different than where I am. I like lived with my um, now late brother for one summer. And I was like literally telling him like, I want to run away. I don't want to be there. I hate right. this. This is not for me. Like it just, it was Cursed and chaotic, like just horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, what do you, as a fifteen-year-old, when you are kicked out, yeah. where do you go? Like, I mean, where any sensible homosexual at the time goes, you go to the the gay district, and uh, mm. you lie about your age. You immediately get you you put, and that's I think where I, like I get so much of like learn. Like I feel like I'm a lot older than I am because I like grew up quick. Because I was like, yeah, I don't want people to know like my business. I want to be able to like incognito thrive in yeah. the gay yeah. community. Um, I will say I looked up your age and I was surprised. Yeah, I'm I like a lot younger you were but older, older than you are. 
What's, yeah. What is your age? Are you well, saying I look like an old lady? No, I'm saying because ah, the ah, way you ah, like ah, the way ah, 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 the way no the way you mentored so many people yeah. on TV and the way people look up to you oh. and the way you talk about your experience. I'm like, oh, that's a lived experience. But yeah, I have she's a very youthful. Old soul. Oh wow, <laughs> she's, she's definitely she's had to grow up quick. definitely younger than you. Oh, uh, most, oh. most people. But are. I feel like you act younger than me. Yeah, you do. Ah. You do. I do. <laughs> I do. You act half my age, and I act like I'm just like a, I'm like a grand high witch of energy. I there would say go. it. Yeah. There you go. I'm a young at heart. Wait. Young. Okay. So this this is my question because I I was I'm Jewish and I was ooh, ra- ooh. I love that. and I was <laughs> raised like I did like go to synagogue when I grew up and I was bar mitzvah, but it wasn't there wasn't an emphasis. It was always like cultural. It was always like it wasn't oh. like Hasidic level. Right, not okay. at all. And it was always like, be involved because that's your heritage, not because yeah. we have to believe in God. In this uh, be here because you want to be here. Yes. Yeah. Okay, love, I love that. So my curiosity yeah. is always to people who were raised in a religious home mm-hmm. who were kicked out because of said religion. Like, yeah. what is your relationship to faith and to God and specifically Christianity now? Because I know you performed so... a, uh, a Christian a Mary, Mary. song yes. at the 90s night. <laughs> She was at the praising Jesus on stage, and I went, naked. she must love him. Naked. Oh, naked. I was fully <laughs> naked. Oh, my God. I was... She said, this is how Jesus well, was. They, <laughs> okay. I said, we come into the world naked, and we leave that way. Um, <laughs> this is how God sees us. My body's a work of art. He eating this Van Gogh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, You know, it's so interesting, because I think people, uh, like ask me about faith a lot. And I think that like, I don't, I I wouldn't trade my upbringing because it gave me a very interesting outlook on supernaturalism. And like, I really got a very interesting hands-on perspective of what is out around us. Not exactly what it is. Like, I can't tell you what the fuck anything right. is, uh-huh. but I know that there's a lot more than what meets the eye. And like what a lot of people talk about or say, or they feel, I'm like, there's so much more beyond that. And I think part of my upbringing helped me understand that in a way. So yeah. I've carried being spiritual and faith with me. Um, I don't identify as Christian whatsoever because I feel like. Not Christian! Not Christian. No, I identify as Christian mingle. I'll mingle all day. But um, I don't identify as Christian, but I do identify as spiritual. Yeah. And I've, in my maturity and coming of age, I think that I love to actually immerse myself in other cultures and other faiths and other things because I like to learn. I know the pluses, negatives, extremes, and subtleties of like my upbringing and and the Christian faith, but I like hearing everything from everywhere else because knowledge is power and perspective is priority. Like you, you, knowledge is power. It is. Learn a book, meatball. Well, you know, I just learned how to read audiobooks. I love a good audiobook. Me, well, I, yeah, I was I was on one until the person started doing character voices, and I you was didn't like, like that. <laughs> no, because it was that's like shocking. a bad British. Oh, that's shocking! <laughs> oh, you didn't like someone being annoying. I feel like that's you, weird. I feel like if the cast of like Sesame Street could read Edgar Allan Poe, you'd be into it. Ah, now that I would probably be into you it. fully. Uh, Yes. She knows how to read. I know. That's because she came up <laughs> in it Dallas like a and the girls know how to do it. I read, I read people, like people not books, honey. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is that is really fascinating. And knowledge is power. And, yeah. you know, it's like we exist on in this world and we have no idea. No idea. What's next? What was before? What was after? Yeah. We, we don't even you know. know what's around us half the time. No. Never. Like, especially it, in bring America. Bring Vicky Box back in here. The yeah. orbs. I you would like her. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's my auntie, so yeah. Oh, now, all, right. That's the thing. All the old girl. Wait. Vicky! Wait! So now you got beef with Vicky Vox. <laughs> all you know the what? old girls. Vicky all Vox, of, Jackie B. All of. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Season, I mean, I said what I said, season, but. Season for all of the All of the alumni of drag is honestly like my family, which I love because, like, that's like. I got into Drag Race, like, on, like, season five. And that was. I was 15. So, like, that was when I was, like, saved. 
honestly like and found anything out about like a queer community so i love like oh my god they're all aunties like detox auntie sonique mm-hmm. auntie oh. sasha mother like there's just they're all all the established yeah, so are you gonna go back for an all-stars or are you gonna win miss condon um keep it in the family we do definitely love keeping it in the family i think that i am down to go wherever the moment takes me mm-hmm. like i think everything can be negotiated and mm-hmm. i think that everything does deserve consideration i don't think that everything needs to happen all at like a certain time so yeah. it's kind of like if it presents itself and it's correctly approached i'll do it Continental's amazing but also like just in terms of, like fiscally speaking it is so expensive so oh, expensive yeah. you're you're paying so much money to like compete and and feel valid and, and have that moment but it's like my like, girl, I got bills to pay. I got I got mouths to feed. I got titties to buy. Ah, <laughs> now, who just won? Was it Sunny Delight? Just won after many, many, many years. Is that correct? They've been. Didn't she win Elite or something this past year? Potentially, I'm not as well versed in Elite, but I do know that. Um, uh, tell me. T- look it up, darling. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I do know that a lot of in the more recent years, they have been giving it to the girls that are consistent, like Stasha Sanchez. Yes. Years. Um, many of the girls that are, I feel like, getting their their flowers now, they are girls that have put their work and commitment in. And that's like a we did an interview a long time ago with Wilma Alaska about pageants. We did like a mini series, mm-hmm. and we interviewed. Oh my God, why am I blanking on her name? Nicole Page. No, Brooks. Sharrington. I'll kill her. Sharrington. Uh, uh, no, I'll kill her. <laughs> But anyway, she's on the hit list. She basically <laughs> said, "I've spent a million dollars on pageant packages." Oh, and they're not—they're not exaggerating Ex- at all. No, oh, at all. Pa- pageants are like, there. Sometimes it's like pageant and homelessness. Like there is, it's so expensive, yeah. and it's like the gowns, the dancers, the hotel fees for dancers, the choreography, the hours, the outfits, and then you know we're dolls. So like the touch-ups that it yes. takes, like. All of that is just, it's its a lot. But in the words of Alyssa Edwards, I got that moment. I okay. got that moment. I got that moment. All right, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to talk about some drags. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're back. Do you sing, Carrie? Um, That's one of the questions. I probably sound a lot like Oh, people. sorry, sorry, sorry. <gasps> Beautiful, talented, yes, gorgeous. gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we are, we are, every time I hear you open, I'm like, is that me? Honestly, twins. I think people would be shocked to know that we look exactly the same under these glasses. We do. We, we do. People would be shocked in general. With, with uh, <laughs> so, so the iconic Sasha Colby yes. is your drag mother. She is, she is. Did you, Mama Colby? Did you meet her? out here because i met her in chicago where i'm from oh yeah and so i know that she hasn't been out in la you know a very very long time right so were you connected to her prior to her being in la or what happened there what's so crazy it's like every time i think about a lot of these things i'm like what the hell is my life so (laughs) i (laughs) i met her in texas actually they did for like one year randomly they had like a prelim something for continental and i had just found out about her because i had already watched season five i think we were watching season six of drag race and i obviously like i had no idea about like necessarily my transness but i was so obsessed with femininity and anytime i saw a trans woman of any stature i was like who is that what is that i need that what like come here please right so I had found out about Continental and I was like, this is like drag race. It's different. And then I was like, but all these girls, like the the parts aren't removable. So I was obsessed. (laughs) And then I. (laughs) You you grab those tits so hard. Heavy. Heavy, heavy. heavy. (laughs) The pants. Oh, they got. I'm like that stripper in Atlanta. Remember? Yeah, she she just just pulled on. (gasps) Oh. Was it yeah. like the Eagle? No, no. We were went to the Claremont Lounge. Lounge. Oh, which I, I later found out Lady Gaga visited. Yeah, right? they the, do the they they have mature ladies. It's like Ooh. sixty year old women. Anyway. Ooh. 
<laughs> where I see myself in a few years. That's that's an experience. Yeah. I might end up having to pop up in there one time. Um, <laughs> in my future. Yeah. But, De- um, decades from now. She's yeah. young. <laughs> she's young. 70 years from now. <laughs> Mood. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I um I met her that night and I had like just watched her videos and like everything and I was like so sensory overloaded and I didn't fully connect her because she had her black hair in Consento and right. she was a blonde Beyonce diva mm-hmm. when I saw her for the first time in Texas and all I saw was this girl after the pageants and I remember seeing the pageant having there was some like every beautiful shape you could think of many that were built and carved from from many doctors Ooh. walking into this uh, bar and I'm just like, what is going on? Like there just so much overload of just transness. And I was like dying. And so we, st- I stayed out that night and at the end of the night I see Sasha and she's just body down and doing like one of her figure eights with her hair and <laughs> like just not stopping. And I was like, I need to, I don't know what I need to do, but like I need to be near this person. Like I need, yeah. Yeah. I need this near me. So I literally ran across the street. There was oncoming traffic. I wasn't uh. paying attention. I was like, she got hit by a car. I almost did. I really almost did, and I fully did not care. And I like really like leapt into her, which nowadays like I would never ever do something like that. Right. So that's how I know it was fate because I just jumped into this random lady. And I was like, you're so beautiful. Who are you? What are you? I I need to like know you better. And it was like a very like brief interaction and very cute, but I was so affected by that. Mm. So when I moved to LA, she moved from I think she moved from Chicago to LA at that time. And so she was like coming around more and I saw her out and I was like, "Oh my god, that is Sasha. Like that's that's the girl from me almost getting hit by a car and needing like the love of my right. like identity. And so I like started to see her and I was like, oh my God, like she lives in LA. And we started to connect because I had gotten drag or I got my like geishas and all that stuff. And this is like back in the day when I was doing like my my big old breastplate and my mm-hmm. silicone hip pads. Uh-huh. And she I had was, the nice hip pads. Oh, I remember silicone hip pads. You could I hit it and it would make it clap. It would clap. <laughs> I was like so in stealth mode. Like I was as trans as you could be without you being really trans. I didn't understand how to get there at the time. Right. So it was like it was it was very comedic in my opinion, looking back. But um in running into Sasha, she's like, You're really pretty and like you look kind of familiar, but like I don't know from where, but like you do drag. Do you have a house? And I was like, What's a house? And she's like, Right. So what's your name? And I was like, Carrie. And she's like, Do you have a last name? And I was like, not really. She's like, okay, well, now you do Carrie Colby. And I was <gasps> like, like it was immediate. That was, gave me chills. Yes. That's amazing. You know, the Everything. same thing actually happened to me. No, it's yes. Sasha Colby. <laughs> nope. She said, you're so pretty. And <laughs> no, she didn't. Do you have a last she name? Never so, and she you know, I wanted Colby. to tell you today. <laughs> that sounds like a, that sounds like, I, I feel like I could order that somewhere. <laughs> you could order like, some Colby Jack, Colby Jack cheese. Colby Jack cheese on top. <laughs> With some curdled Colby Jack cheese. She'd look at you and say, sir, can you even touch your toes? You I can't. Be, you can't be a cold. I can touch my job. Maybe not with the breastplate on. Yeah, maybe not with the breastplate. I on. feel like you have to do it with the breastplate. That's the art form. That, yeah, it, just, that's what we came here for. Sideways. Is the art. Just, Did just you sideways. remember when she used to go go dance at the Abbey and she would I hang do. off of those little poles? She would fully hang and then she would fully would like her whole routine would just be like this and she'd be like, do, 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 oh yeah, the do, hair do. thing. She All is day long. so. She is so everything. Talented. She is everything. Yeah, literally. Now, Meatball, mm-hmm. we have something special prepared for you, Carrie. Oh, I'm, I think I'm, like, ready, but I'm also a little scared. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, well, Meatball. Right. Uh, this is a new tradition that we've been doing. We did, did it with your friend Jasmine Kennedy. Oh, my daughter, actually. It's in the... Oh, oh, right. You are the mother of all the girls. I had to adopt that one because, you know, child. And I'm you're working on Maddie right me. now? <laughs> you, Maddie is a forever work in progress. There's definitely a woman in there. It's in her house with her. But I but I also saying, think there's please a woman wear deodorant tomorrow. <laughs> 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 um, or don't. Oh, do, 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 did anything. you ever watch the Tyra Banks interview with Beyonce entitled "Say My Name, Say My Name"? I feel like I have seen it. I haven't seen it in its entirety. Okay, well, don't worry. You don't have to see it in the entirety, but it is a rapid-fire questions game. But we're going to call this one called The Slant Rhyme My Name Game with Carrie Colby. Okay. So I'm going to list off a series of your name and ask you a quick question. Wait, give it a better intro. 
Slant my name. Oh, this time we're calling it Slant Rhyme My Name with Carrie Colby. I hate that title. Okay, well, she just came up with a better one. Slant it? My Name. Slant My Name. Slant My Name. There you go. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Make it Take right. it For away. For being a good writer. Take it Maybe away. Maybe you should be the okay. producer I'm a, over I'm a, here. I'm a, I'm a, okay. I'm a ghost writer. <laughs> Harry Colby. Human or synthetic? I mean, I've definitely been Harry Colby before, and it was always human. <laughs> Canary Colby. What's your favorite song to sing at home? Canary Colby? It would be anything Whitney or Mariah. Sing it now. Um, <clears throat> it's going to take just a minute. I sang it. Oh, yeah, my it. God. It was so good. <laughs> it was amazing, huh? Uh-huh. Dairy Colby. What's your favorite type of cheese? Um, goat. I actually really like goat cheese. Oh my god, it's so good. I really do, yeah. Tangy. <laughs> Barry Colby. Which one of your season 14 sisters would you like to bury alive? <laughs> bury alive? Or dead. I mean, there's times like Jasmine, she knows this. <laughs> but she knows this. Like, but then I also would bring her right back out. Like, <laughs> when it's time, when she learns her lesson. Yeah, 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 out. yeah. Um, Ari Colby. What's your Delta status? My Delta status right now is um, I'm almost diamond. Ooh. Yeah. Barry. What's your, hold on. What's your Delta status? Silver. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's good. You're working it's on okay. it. It's okay. I don't get, travel that much. That means nothing. You get, like, you get nothing. You, you, you get two luggages. Oh, two luggages for free. That's yeah. cute. Which is nice. That, yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah. See, I like that she's nice about it. I know. She's very nice. <laughs> He's Optimistic. Gold. Soon You're to be platinum. See, we're in the same, we're in the same yeah. universe. One more flight, not platinum. <laughs> Berry Colby, did you know that blackberries, mulberries, and raspberries are not berries at all, but bananas, pumpkins, avocados, and cucumbers are? So what makes a berry? Well, a berry has seeds in a pulp that's developed from an ovary of a flower. Huh? Carrie Moldy, how many times <laughs> do you wear your costume before you wash it? Um, I'm unfortunately like a one-time use girl. Same. I, I think like... they need to be washed w- right after being. <laughs> I'm like I'm I'm feeling a different answer over here. <laughs> but, well, he's you know never at any of my shows, so he never gets ah! to smell. That is not true. Carry gold everything in Snooky perfume. Yeah, but I also like people to smell me before I walk on. But it's got to be you got to be. You like them to smell you, like, like who no, you snookies. are. Oh, Snookies. <laughs> I was thinking Sniffies. Ooh, Ooh. Carrie Goldie. <laughs> Did you get to hold an Emmy? Did I get to hold? I have held Emmys, but they weren't mine. <gasps> Carrie Oldie. What's an old drag trend that's making a comeback that you hate? That I hate? I mean, like the really oversized jewelry that makes like the earlobe sag. Okay. I don't think that that's necessary. You mean like the ones where it's like dishes, like they're plates on their ears. Basically. It's like big and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that, I see that. That's just not for me. But I also feel like drag is going towards a minimalist look right now. Everyone is transgender or adjacent. Like everyone. No, that's just y- what you're trying to do. No. Expl- 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 I'm trying to do the your trans agenda <laughs> on all these tracks. Any queen you touch all the new trans. Queens, to trans. But no, like all the new queens, they don't pad, they wear human hair, right. they, that's they, true. they that's mimic true. like your beauty influencer when it comes to mug. They're all doing like super feminine numbers, which I love, but I'm like, there's like many different forms of drag. I mm-hmm. appreciate when I see something I don't necessarily see all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. I like flavor. Share me, Colby. Have you ever been in a polyamorous relationship? I'm like very interested in the idea of one because I'm not like a monogamous minded individual. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been in one, but I mean like I've been in like situations with multiple people. Scary Colby. <laughs> ah! You definitely scared me. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Carrie, hold deep. Have you ever fisted oh. anyone? No. Carrie, hold me. Do you hug your fans? Of course. I love that. I think you have to. Like, that's a must. Really? I I mean, I like being hugged. I like physical touch, and I like put a lot of effort into how I smell. So I'm like, smell me, darling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Carrie, slowly. How long does it take you to get into full drag? Um, depends on what it is. If it's like a local gig or just something that I don't have to like get like fully prepared for, like an hour and a half. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Carrie Aioli, favorite dipping sauce? Um, I like anything truffle, like truffle ketchup, truffle mayonnaise, Ooh, truffle butter, truffle butter. 
Mm-hmm. That goes that goes really good with Carrie Whole Deep. Very <laughs> Carrie <laughs> Ravioli. You eat pasta? Absolutely. I'm Italian's like my favorite food category. Really? Maybe I'm a Getty girl. You got the little doms? The little doms. Oh. Is that like a valley like you, tradition? No, it's in Los Feliz. You point like it's up the street. Right over there. No. Los Feliz. <laughs> I haven't spent much time in Los Feliz, but I love it. Okay, okay. I should go. Library Colby. Okay. Do you like to read? Did that rhyme? It's, it's slam. Oh. It's slam. That was, there was the Rary slam. Library Colby. Colby. Airy. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> I don't. I'm not a reader. I'm really Books dyslexic. Books on tape. Right, 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 Period. right. I'm so dyslexic. Dysentery Same. Colby. Oh, I love you that You ever one. shit yourself on stage? <laughs> Mentally all the time. <laughs> Thank you so much for playing. <laughs> I do definitely mentally. I, yeah, sometimes I'll do a weird squat and I'll be like, well, is that the one? You know what I mean? Or like, oh my God, if you, like, I drink Celsius. I love a good Celsius. But if you have Celsius and like pre stage like anxiety, you fully feel like something's about to like go so wrong. And it, it, for me, it doesn't, but like it feels like it might. What is Celsius? Crack cocaine (laughs) in a drink. Does it have alcohol in it too? Is it like no. more no. loco? No. The thing is, so it has double the, or triple almost, the caffeine of a Red Bull. However, it also has a lot of natural ingredients and appetite suppressants. So it like makes it where you just can go all day long. I That's was a on a movie set. Well, they don't have was... them in WeHo because WeHo needs to up their budget. Uh, as a city. You as heard it here. Who's the mayor city. of WeHo? Y'all Up need Celsius, bunch. not Red Bull. Do like, you that's live trash. in WeHo? No. Where, do, where do you live? I live in downtown LA now. Oh, oh right. Oh, yeah. Talk about that because it's so close to precinct. Close to precinct. She could basically oh, yeah. take a I scooter like, there. I could. But instead, she brings a, uh, she she walks. I have walked to precinct. Really? Mm-hmm. It's a, that's a sketchy area to be walking in at night. I used to live a block away and so many people put their arms around me on the way to the bar. Oh. Like, on multiple occasions, people would just, like, walk up and put an arm around me and be like, hey, how is I wish people would. No, actually, I don't. No, but so like, you want no. strangers to touch you. <laughs> no, but, don't like, I that. wish because, like, no one ever says or does anything to me ever. People are just scared of me. Probably because you're Intimidate. pretty and I look yeah. like a fucking circus clown. You look like something they could um, actually get to. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my right. God. If they We're... got a red pickup truck, I'm in. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, take a break and then we'll be back with our last <laughs> segment. And we're back. Okay, Carrie, I we've felt talked about on that one. You, you thank did. You, thank you. Thank you. We've talked about so many things. You uh, yourself just said there are so many different forms of drag. There are types of drag. What excites you? Like, what kind of drag? Yeah, what kind of drag do you like to excites see? Excites you when you're out. Uh, so I'm someone that like, like I used to go to the circus as a kid, and I loved it. Like Ring a Ling, Barnum Brothers, and Bailey <laughs> Circus. Clowns. Featuring Meatball she was my favorite <laughs> thing ever because, you know, I was like five years old when she was doing her ass. <laughs> yes! oh, oh, <laughs> um, so you were my favorite clown to watch. Thank yes. you. Know, at the time. Mm-hmm. No, but she drove up in the clown car and opened it up and was the only one who uh, got out. But it was like, still ta-da! amazing. <laughs> I squeezed myself out. Yep. Period. I, um, I've never... I've never not liked something that shocks me. I like being shocked. So like, yes. so like Abora, Vander Von Odd, Bitch Pudding. Like yes. I love seeing things uh, that like my the sister bitch. Gals. Yes, the my sister spooky. bitch. She makes me like queeze, not queep, like queasy uh-huh. when she does her uh-huh. mock water moment. But I love seeing things that are just like shocking. I like being shocked. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's exciting. You know, it's like you can't deny star quality good Never. performance and like a well thought out gig absolutely and so i think i think you know whatever the the whole conversation about this kind of drag versus that kind of drag and as someone who performs in those spaces but doesn't do drag like there's always like well at the end of the day is it entertaining exactly did it make yeah. you feel something did you want to throw a dollar on the stage like did Great. you talk about it later did you think about it later if so is valid. Yeah. Absolutely. I like things that, like, I, because, like, drag, unfortunately, because I do it so often now, it kind of exhausts me. Mm-hmm. So when I do see drag, I like to see something that, like, blows me away in some way, shape, or form. Like, yeah. I love 
concept queens. Like a, any concept, you could be conceptualizing a rubber ducky in a bathtub and bringing it to life. Mm-hmm. Do the damn thing. I'm living for it. You yes. can Remember whatever it is. Concept. Was it a Kyria? What? Oh my god! Chanel, who brought the bathtub on stage? Her number. Yes, she did. Oh yeah, and it had water my in it. Body. It's your body. She serves. Yes, she's amazing. I know. Her like, tr- talk about a transformation. She'll look. She'll look a hundred ways in one day. Oh, fully. She can do and, it all. Like little known fact, she's always got her body hair on her too. She's always ready to be trade after. Wait, the gig, what? The gig. She's like you. <laughs> I've covered, <laughs> I've covered up most of it. Yeah. Except for on my chin. Somewhere. Oh. <laughs> now, um, we want to talk to you about Surge. Oh, yeah. You just got you just got Let's done. Let's get into it. Because you hang out with a bunch of the BBL boys. That's what I like the to BBL call them. The BBL boys. The BBL boys, honey. Um, We call them the Sephora managers. Ooh. Because they're always in a black polo and black slacks. They're always in black on black on black. And I the BBL is sitting. That. I, and I, the BBL always be sitting. It is. Because, like, you know when you walk into a store and you're like, oh, excuse me, can you help me? And, and they're like, like don't yeah. Work here. Yeah, <laughs> they would be like, I don't work here. And I'd be like, oh. <laughs> no, right. but then they go like, yeah, let me check on that. And they turn around and walk away. And then you're like, oh. Move. <laughs> then you're like, oh, I noticed the BBL. That's the where the name came it, from. honey. Um, um, now, without them, I don't think you'd be uh, <laughs> able to properly apply glitter, as I saw last time we worked together. I definitely have my glitter You have applies. a very specific way of doing it. Wait, Will you describe what? it for us? Oh my God. So, I mean, I am obsessed with <laughs> glitter and like sparkling. Jesus Ooh, that was guttural, God. honey. <laughs> Where did yes. that come from? Well, wow. it's all this vaping I've been doing. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So, your glitter I was like, oh, honey, yes. Hit me with the stizzy. Um, <laughs> she knows. I love a good stizzy. Um, but so, with me, I am obsessed with being glittery. Um, in fact, there are some venues that have told me, like, don't use oil because <laughs> they're like, it's too much. I'm like, I like to be sparkly, but um, I literally have well, that someone recently use like, happened to me. Oh, move with the red glitter. <gasps> oh, they some venues get like crazy about it, but they basically use lotion and they'll like put it all over, and then they take like glitter, loose glitter, and a and a brush, and they like flick it everywhere. So she st- she has to stand there like this for mm-hmm. Lord no- however long until they're done. And for last time they didn't inch. realize that they were standing right in front of the fan, so he would flick it. And it would just blow it away, and they'd be like, "It's not even ending up on you." <laughs> Where did it all go? We were, I was covered in glitter, and I was like, "I'm gorgeous now." <laughs> Make everything. Sparkle. But yeah, I've never thought of that. And then I was at home, and I was doing it. Oh, you're right, because like the lotion that has the glitter in it, when you put it on, it just like lays flat, and it doesn't sparkle. You gotta same. put loose glitter on. It's top gotta of be it, on and top it gives you of like it. A 3D effect. So she Very sparkles like, way better than uh, everybody else. Beyonce in the one plus one video. <laughs> Yeah, you know Beyonce. She wears the pantyhose and then she puts lotion over the pantyhose, she does. and then she puts glitter on top of that. And they're crystal pantyhose too. Sometimes. Oh, they're the shiny ones. Sometimes she does a full-on drag pantyhose. Yes, good ABs. for her body. Ugh. Okay, so like the surge. Yes. Yeah. What's surge. your favorite surgery to get done? Well, um, I feel like my favorite surgery I've ever had is definitely my BBL, and I have to set the record straight because a lot of people think I got silicone pumped. Oh. And like I'm all for if you want to do something to your body, do it. But like that's like gonna kill you at like a very Silicone early age. Is yeah, it's it likes so to travel scary. after a while. Yeah. yeah, so I get like scared of people thinking that's what I did because I'm like I want to look like her, or whatever. And I'm like, don't do that because if you get silicone, like I'm 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 not liable. Right, yeah. right, exactly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. my BBL I think was the most gender affirming surgery that I've oh. had because that just made me finally feel so euphoric in my body um it's also the most f- fucked surgery to recover from because it's like such a long recovery yeah. how long did it take you to recover it i feel like i just now have stopped like with like pretty like apparent um side effects from like the recovery so like you literally like swell up constantly everything you eat if you eat anything with salt swollen everything Whoa. swells um you cannot sit lay do anything with your butt at all at all for like three months three months yeah so and it it it, uh-huh. it sounds like what and it literally like when you're doing it you start to get to this point where you like almost go crazy because like you're supposed to like hover when you like use the restroom or you're supposed to use like a specific pillow that puts pressure in specific areas 
because if you mess with the fat when it's fresh, it um, especially if you are anatomically something else, uh-huh. um, you can ruin your fat cells and then they'll go away. That's why I think I've seen some of those BBLs where the top is like this and then it goes flat because <gasps> the people were sitting on, on it too much. So some people, flat. some so people. So you, what? I mean, for what three do months, do you for have three to just months, like lay like on you your drive belly. in a car, like you, do. You could take a BBL pillow with you and it like repos- redistributes like the, the weight. weight. It's not comfortable at all. Um, but you can do that. But like for the most part, like you're really supposed to like. Home. How do you you have to submit a letter to the airline to let them fly on your knees? Because I've seen like immediately after footage. That's, Did you do yours in I, LA or in where'd you go? They would not give me the shape I wanted, so I had to go to Mexico. Yeah, I feel like that's where most people have to. You gotta go if them. you want There's good to hospitals be in Mexico. Well, and the thing is, their um, their CC limit, their leader limit is different. So, like, America's very, like, strict and, like, we don't want to, like, cause any problems because BBL is, like, the most dangerous yes, yeah. thing you can get. You have a very high chance of dying from One it. One in 2,000 people. Yeah. It's crazy. I feel like it's honestly a higher ratio than that. That was it two years ago. It could have gone I up. think it's well, higher it's now gone because I mean, more people so are getting people have gotten yeah. it. It's like the COVID surgery, honestly. Oh, yeah. Everyone was running off and getting them. Oh, right. Because they were like, we're not doing shit, so I have plenty of time to recover. I that, watched one and, girl and get one, and they had to thicker. Put- they had to put her in a special stretcher on the airplane. She had to like buy out a block, and they put up a curtain. And she was laying on her back, but the they cut a hole in the bottom of it so her BBL could hang. Well, she was um, a very rich, oh, yeah, she's rich, rich young yeah, yeah, lady. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. But I was crazy. I was like, damn. Most so wait. girls literally just like sit on their knees. But the whole thing is like, like I went where I was able to get, like, I stayed there for long enough, and then I was driven back. Yeah, I was going to say drive back, right? If, I could not imagine flying. Because you have to sit like, in your seat for takeoff and landing. Even at a like, platinum set. Yeah, right? Even in Delta Comfort Plus, honey. Even, honey. Well, we've discovered that Comfort Plus is a racket. It's a scam. But not, we're not going to get scam. into it. It's a scam. Okay. I, the I, the other thing that I loved is you recently did you you recently had uh, rhinoplasty is this correct Yes, I got a light FFS. So they did a eyelid like retraction. They also did a full like rhinoplasty, and it also was like a lip lift in a way. So it like feminized my whole profile. And then you immediately were like, uh huh, and eat it with these photos. Oh, yeah, you took them. With I the lived for that. You were like, I had I'm got it I literally had deadlines, and I'm not someone that I really hide from like who right. I am or what yeah. I do. So I was like, I had deadlines, and I have to meet these. And I was like, I'm literally like so opiate out, and I'm just like, oh my god, let's shoot. And like, <laughs> I love, I loved it. I thought so it was much. great. It was fun. I now looking back, I'm like. That was unhinged. But do you ever fun. get any con. negative comments about any of the work that you've had? Like, or people that think that it's like not good role model stuff? I think that everyone likes to project how they personally feel with aesthetics on people. So a lot of times I feel like what to me is negative is when I see people um, comparing me from before and after and then being like, oh my God, you look so much better. I'm so glad you did that. Like you were fucked before. Like you Oh my that. God. Like, people do, or, like, they're really, really specific to, like, affirm the fact that, like, I made a decision to change something. And then there are, like, I feel like the ancestors, I like to call them, that they're, like, more, like, very, like, down to earth. And they're usually people of color. And they're, like, what are you doing? Like, why did you do that? And it's, Uh like, I just wanted to be me. Like, it's not, Mm. I had no moral compass going into any surgical decision I've made except my own priority of being euphoric when I look in the mirror because right. I see myself every day. Yeah. And if I see things that remind me of who I was before I have found my current identity, it makes me very uncomfortable. Like it's not, I don't want to like see the old me and like the new me and like feel like a science project. So I'm like, yeah. I want to feel valid all the time. You recently tweeted this photo of you like pre transition, <laughs> and you said I was the, having a day. You were like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I miss this person. I do. What did you mean by that? I think that day, I don't even know exactly what I was going through, but I was really going there. I mean, it's just honest. I feel like a lot of people, especially trans people, we love to ride into the new, new, now, now, right. us, us, me, me, we, we, and like you know 
I am this identity. And sometimes, just me at least being honest, you know, I'm not one of those trans people that was like, I was, I could never, 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 never be the opposite gender. Like, I hated it. Like, I fully live my life as identifying as male um, for up to like 24. Like, I did it for a while. And it did get to me where I was like, this is not authentic to me. This is not, mm -hmm. this doesn't feel real. This doesn't, this doesn't make me happy. But I did enjoy the fantasy of it. Like, I love me a good hot ass nigga. So, I tried to be one for a minute, and um, that did not work because I'm a lady. <laughs> um, I was like always like bearded, lined up, always wow. looking looking fresh. But then I was like, "Hey, what's up? My name's like blah blah blah," <laughs> and it was like, "Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> like I would have totally made fun of my old self. But there are times I see like like it, I, it's the iPhone memories tab that'll get Whoa. you. Oh God, I hate her. She gets you right and she'll like pop up like old things with like who knew friends. siri was a she bully. goes remember him she's such a bully yeah <laughs> she'll be like remember him and it'll be like a friend or like yeah god forbid like friends of mine like aren't with me anymore like right. living or whatever so it's like it'll hit me and i'll be like oh my god like i had an entire life before who i am now and i'm so happy i'm different in every way shape and form mentally physically spiritually but there are times i'm like i do miss understanding i feel like i had a lot more understanding of something else like to me being in my previous body was a science experiment for me like i never identify with what mm -hmm. i saw but i always was like this is fierce like is this what a beard looks like oh wow oh interesting. <laughs> like That's i so was cool. fully my own science project of like build and you know i'm part black so i can say i was like fully build a nigga like that right. was me yeah down so that was like fun i guess at times and like being able to like play around with masculinity and then like yeah. walk out and like try to like serve it it was just like i don't know it was like something that was like entertaining to me and then now i'm like oh bitch that is that person is dead so right there are times i'm like that was kind of fun so i guess i just and layman's terms i need like a boyfriend that i can like totally play with like that and just like line them up, up yeah do all the things with them and, and then like, you get to dress up as barbie right and go to work. barbie and like 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 brown ken I don't, <laughs> I, they need a little color mm -hmm. they need a little color a little some body hair something flavor right it's right seasoning <laughs> um well listen carrie we've made it to the end of the show oh my we survived we, we survived. did it <laughs> I think I, I think what you're saying is like so it's it's so great because I think a lot of people do think at least from the outside yeah. that the idea of a trans experience once you're able to come out or make that transition you mm -hmm. want to leave the old life behind but it's and like, some people do some, some people, people do yeah, some people do and that's psychologically fine. really truly like have to but I think I try to normalize reality like right. just accept who who you are as a person gender identity does not change your soul and who you are you're not invalid because for a time and space you were something else and i feel very blessed that i was able to truly say that i enjoyed my full experience in many different forms yeah and that's me i don't think everyone needs to do that but for me i'm like baby i enjoyed it that's inspiring. Sir. Period. Sir. Just love yourself. You're so Slay. smart. Yeah. It's so crazy. It's really great to I listen guess. to you. <laughs> I don't know. You've just like lived such a life. It's so crazy. She's yeah. been around the block, honey. <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening to Sloppy Seconds. You can follow us at Sloppy Pod. You can send us an email to sloppy seconds at gmail.com or call in with your own fuck talk story to 213536. Nine one eight zero. Take that solo, Carrie. Eight zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Wait, she got his leg. Where can people find you? Do you have anything fun coming up you need um, to tell people about? I think the main thing I'm so excited about coming up is I was able to do my own TV show, <laughs> and that <laughs> is coming out um very soon. <laughs> I, if I, I I think I can say this because everyone knows there's going to be a season 15. So when season 15 premieres, um, my show on Wow Presents Plus, it's called Carrie Cares, is going to be debuting. And it's going to be so fun because I think for the first time, I fully was given whatever I wanted to do, whatever I wanted to think, whatever I wanted to feel, and however we wanted to make it happen, like make that a reality. And I had so much fun. And I was also like, 
fresh out of recovery, like my nose cast had just come off. So oh I was like, God. I was like, I'm gonna be an idiot today. So <laughs> it was a lot of lot you were of like, fun to don't do. Don't get too close, <laughs> right? I was painted down, <laughs> and my nose was running because of it. The oh talcum my powder. God. But um, it will be coming out on Wow Presents Plus, and I'm so excited to share it because it's such a authentic um, journey for me and my fans. Because the whole structure. I wanted it to be very based around the Care Bears, what they think, what they feel, what they want to know, what they're going through, and how can I be involved with that? And being able to do that and make it like a televised moment, I'm so excited to show that's, oh that's incredible. Yeah. Congratulations. It's going to be fun. Yes. And you can follow us at Big Dipper Jelly and Spiciest Meatball on Instagram, <laughs> Fat Dragon Meatball on Twitter, and follow yes. us at Mom Podcast on everywhere, too. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't ever miss an episode. Don't you dare forget to subscribe. There you go. Now, we do have two quick announcements that we are going to make right here on this show. What? Yes. Okay, Sloppy Seconds Live. It's our 300th episode. episode. We are celebrating with a live show here in LA at the Virgil in Silver Lake Tuesday, on Tuesday, December, December 6th. 6th. Because, you know, Tuesdays, Tuesdays are... Tuesdays the Tuesday episode. Are so we're going to be doing us. it on a Tuesday. That's and Tuesday. Tuesday. you can get your tickets. They're available now at sloppy300.eventbrite.com. Damn, you really hit them with that. Sloppy300.eventbrite.com. Great. Period. And there's going to be limited space, so snatch up those tickets. It's limited. It's limited. And, and also, also, Fat Slut, we're going to Austin, Texas. Texas. It's happening Friday, December 9th. 9th at Cheer Up Charlie's in Austin, Texas. We have Kennedy Davenport, Ooh. Louisiana Ooh, Purchase, Low Tyon, and many, many more. Many, many more. So get your tickets at fatslut.eventbrite.com, baby. And we'll see you in Texas. If it ain't a fat slut, it ain't right, baby. Ooh. Okay. And we're going to have Carrie there, too. I'm just kidding. I can't afford it. <laughs> can't afford that okay <laughs> goodbye Bye. to listen to sloppy seconds one day early ad free and to watch our full video episodes sign up for mom plus at mompodcast.plus sloppy seconds is produced by moguls of media aka mom hosted by big dipper and meatball editing and sound design by william pitts executive produced by willem belli alaska thunderfuck big dipper and Joe Cilio. Our artwork was drawn by Christian Cimarroni. And our theme song was written by Mike Malarkey.